Hi everyone, you're very welcome to another one of our gardening shorts videos. Today is International Plant a Flower Day. So it's really nice, it's kind of the start of the growing season when you can really get going and, and sow lots of seeds for our gardens or balconies. Um, so today I'm gonna sow with you some calendula or pot marigold seeds. We love growing these flowers in the children's garden. Firstly, because they're really easy to grow and um, they're a brilliant beginner flower. Uh, but also they're really lovely flowers. They're happy colours, they're sunny and bright. Um, so they look great in any garden. And the other great thing about them is as well, they'll do really well in containers. So even if you only have a balcony or a windowsill, uh, you can give these ones a go. They're sometimes called pot marigolds is another name for them. And that's actually because you can put them in the pot. They're, they're edible. So you can eat the, the petals, you can just eat them, you can pick them off and eat them and put them in salads. And they make sort of salads look nice and pretty. Or uh, they're used to uh, colour different foods as well. Or um, you can also, often you see calendula on um, um, skin creams, you can make ointments out of them as well. Um, it's a nice calming and soothing effect on your skin. But another really good reason to grow them for gardeners is that they actually attract some beneficial insects into your garden. So things like ladybirds, and particularly the larvae of the ladybirds, eat aphids or green fly and gardeners don't like aphids around their garden because they can kind of uh, wreck their plants so if you grow plants like calendulas in your garden they attract in these insects then that then eat the insects that you don't want so it's really it's like a win-win we get these lovely flowers they're really pretty we get to use them but also um it helps our gardens as well so the things you need for this, again, they're all things that are readily available and show you that you don't need a lot of um, high-tech equipment. We are actually going to use milk containers um, and we're going to sow our seeds in them. So you need some milk cartons, uh, your compost, your seeds. So these ones are called Calendula Oopsie Daisy, which is a great name, and um, a pen and uh, a scissors. So to get going, first of all, we're going to cut the side of our milk carton out. So you might need a bit of help with this, uh, starting it off can be a bit tricky, but basically we're just going to cut the whole side off. This gives a nice depth for starting off your seedlings. We're going to keep this panel and we're going to use that later. Um, but what we need to do now is just put in some, some little drainage holes. Um, so water drains away. Obviously the plants need water, but they don't like sitting in water. So we need to put in, it's really important to put in these little holes just to drain off any excess. And then we're going to use this spare panel as our plant label. So I'm just trimming it down. Um, don't, it doesn't need to be quite as high as it is. So while our hands are still clean, we can write the name of our seeds on them and the date. Then that just pops in at the, the back end of our seed tray and we can start filling it with compost. So I like to fill it up to the top and then press it down, particularly the corners. And it's important to do this because it helps the seeds then soak in the water. If the soil is too loose, it um, the seeds can't soak up the water evenly. Now it's time for our seeds. And well, I love seeds and I love if you sow a new pack of seeds, I love seeing what kind of shape or size uh, or texture they are because they're all so different. And particularly these calendula seeds I love because they're such an unusual shape. They're kind of like little caterpillars or something. So we're gonna put in uh, 10 seeds because these trays will hold about 10 plants nicely. The th the th another thing I really love about calendula is it's really easy to save the seed. So once it's finished flowering, you leave the flower head on it and they'll turn into seeds. And then at the end of the summer, you can collect them and save them in a paper envelope for next year. So you should only ever have to buy one packet of calendula seeds ever. Or even better, you can share them around your friends and family. So we put in the 10 seeds and then uh, put another little layer of compost over them. But also keep, it's important, it's handy for watering to keep a little bit of a gap um, between your soil and the top of the container, just so the water doesn't spill over the edge of it. And then give them a good old water, uh, particularly starting off, you want that whole compost to be soaked through. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to keep these indoors just to get them started with a bit of heat. 
Um, if you don't have room, they can sit outside somewhere as, as sheltered as possible and warm as possible. I'm going to keep these indoors. Um, these are ones I sewed about three weeks ago. And what I did with these actually is I kept them indoors at night time when it was cold and then to get as much sunlight as possible every morning I put them outside in a sunny spot and you can see they're they're doing really well they're getting their first true set of leaves there. Another great thing about these containers is when they're ready to transplant out so in another few weeks and um, when they're they're nice and big sized uh, plants I can you can just tear down the sides of these containers and then you're able to to break up the soil quite easily and um, plant them out into pots or into the ground. There you have your calendulas nicely sewn now and in the next couple of weeks you should start seeing them emerging up from, from your compost. So I hope that gives you a bit of encouragement to go and grab any container that you can find and uh, find some nice flower seeds and go and plant some nice flowers in your garden this weekend.